Welcome to Electro Online, and here's our first example of how to apply the nodal analysis method using what we call the inspection method, simply by inspection, and you're going to like this method. In the previous example, in the previous video, we showed you the general approach, but here we're going to do an exact replica of that general approach, but with numbers in it so you can see how it actually works, and it works quite well. Again, the first thing we we'll want to do is find the reference node, which we already have here. We'll call that the zero voltage node right there. And then the next thing we'll want to do is assign the voltages to the other nodes. There's two nodes right here. We'll call it V1 and V2. So the purpose of this method, the nodal analysis method, is to find the voltages at various nodes, in this case at these particular nodes. Also notice that with this method you typically have current sources like we do here. Next step, assign conductances to each of the resistors. Notice we've given the resistor values, 6 ohms, 4 ohms, and 2 ohms, to find conductances. Then we could say that G1 here would be equal to 1 over 6, G2 would be equal to 1 over 4, and G3 would be equal to 1 over 2. Remember that the conductance is simply the inverse of the resistances. Maybe to keep it a little bit cleaner, let's just write the conductance is 1 sixth, the conductance here is 1 fourth, the conductance here is 1 over 2. So those are the conductances of the three resistors. Next step, we want to find the elements of the conductance matrix. We're going to need a matrix right here. And in here we're going to have the G11, the G22, and then the minus the cross G's. In other words, the conductance between the nodes. To, to illustrate that, G11 is simply the addition of all the conductances directly connected to V1. So in this case, 1 sixth is connected to V1 and 1 fourth is connected to v, v, V1. So 1 sixth plus 1 fourth is the sum of the conductances connected to V1. If we want to add that, we need a common denominator, which would be 12. So we get 2 over 12 plus 3 over 12 which is 5 over 12. So that's the sum of the conductances connected to node 1. That element goes in here. Here we get 5 over 12. The next we want to have all the conductances that are directly connected to V2 added. This gives us G22 and that would be 1 fourth plus 1 half which is equal to common denominator is 1 four is a fourth that 1 fourth plus 2 fourths which is equal to 3 quarters, oops, 3 quarters, which is equal to 0 0.75, and that would be the value of the element here. So those are the diagonal elements. Along the diagonal, we simply add up all the conductances connected to all of the nodes. In this case, there's just two nodes, so we have two diagonal elements. In the cross diagonals, get G12 equals G21, which is equal to, here we find the conductance that connects the two nodes. In this case, the conductance between node 1 and node 2 is 1 quarter. That gives us 1 quarter, which is equal to 0 0.25. And that goes into the cross elements. Now be careful, one more thing. That should be the negative value of that. So let me leave a little more room here. So it's negative 0 0.25. That's very important. If you don't put the negative in there, you will not get it correct. Minus 0 0.25 and minus 0 0.25. We now take this matrix, we multiply it times the two voltages, V1 and V2. Those are the unknowns that we're looking for. And we set that equal to the currents entering and leaving each of the nodes. In the case of node 1, we have 10 amps entering, 5 amps leaving. Now, what we're doing here is we're only putting in the currents of the, of the current sources, not the currents of any of the other branches. So don't get that confused. We simply here look at all the current sources entering V1 node 1 and all the current sources leaving, so 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. I'll write it as such so you can see it. So this is 10 minus 5. And then here on node 2 there's only one uh, current source entering, that would be 5 amps entering. And so in essence we have 5 and 5. I just wrote as 10 minus 5 so you can see where it came from. The next thing to do is simply solve these equations. We have the node equations in matrix format, which is good. Because now what we're going to do to solve this is first we find the determinant. The determinant is equal to 5 over 12 minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. And now with a calculator, 
we multiply 5 times 0.75, 5 times 0.75, and divide by 12, and then we subtract the product of those two, minus 1 point, oop, I'll take that back, minus 0.25 squared equals, and so the determinant in this case is 0 0.25. The matrix to find the first voltage is going to be equal to the same matrix as this, but with these elements right here replaced by the current elements. So 10 minus 5 is 5. This would be 5. We keep that column. Minus 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. So when we work this one out, 5 times 0 0.75, and then subtract the product of those two, but we have a negative there. Negative times negative is a positive. So we add 1.25 and we get 5. The matrix that allows us to find the voltage of the second node, now we replace the second column by the currents. The first column stays intact, so 5 over 12 and minus 0 0.25. And here, instead of writing those elements, we're going to write the current elements. Again, that's 5 and 5. And that is equal to 5 times 5, that's 25, divided by 12. And we subtract the product of those two, but of course this negative makes it a positive, plus 1.25, and we get 3.33. Now all we have to do is to find the voltages. We can say that V1 is equal to the result of this matrix divided by the determinant, in this case it would be 5 divided by 0 0.25, which is equal to 20 volts, that's the voltage at node 1, and the voltage at node 2 is equal to the result of the second matrix divided by the determinant, which is equal to 3.33 divided by 0 0.25, which is in essence, I'll make that a 5, looks a little better, it's actually it's this number times 4, and we get 13.33 volts, and those are the voltages at the two nodes, V1 and V2. At that point, if you want to find the currents in each of the branches, that's fairly easy to do. For example, let's say you want to find the current through here, and I'll just call that current, um, hmm, what do I call it? I4, just doesn't matter. We want to find I4, you can say that I4 would be equal to the voltage difference between the two nodes divided by the resistance of 4 ohms. Notice that we have 20 ohms, right, uh, 20 volts over here. We have 13.33 volts over there, which means the difference here would be 20 volts minus 13.33 volts divided by 4 ohms, which is equal to 6.67 volts divided by 4 ohms, which is equal to looks like 1.67, right? So 6.6654 equals, yeah, 1.67 amps, which means we have 1.67 amps flowing this way, 5 amps coming this way together. Through here, we can add those two together. That would be 6.67 amps in this direction. Come around the corner, we have 10 amps coming this way. That means we have some current if this is 6.67 amps, that means 3.33 amps must flow this way. Add those two together, we get 10 amps coming here. We have 5 amps coming up here, 3.3 amps going this way, and I4 will be equal to 1.67 amps. So you can look around the whole circuit, you see that the voltages work out, the currents work out, and now you see why this is such a nice method to come up with the equations to quickly find the voltages at the nodes, and from that very quickly be able to find the currents through each of the branches. It's a very nice method, you just have to be careful not to make any small little mistakes in the matrices, but once you have it set up, it's very easy to apply. Let's do a few more examples in some, some additional videos so you can really get the hang of this method, and I bet you you're going to like it. That's how we do it.